or get started. Good afternoon, everybody. As Megan said, I am Catherine Temple, and I'm a lab informatics consultant here at CSOLS um, for experience, but clearly not much experience um, using the correct monitor for my go-to webinar. Um, as for my laboratory experience, I started out in pharmaceutical QC and R&D. Um, my academic background is in molecular genetics and organic chemistry. My most recent experience has been with CSOLs, um, and it's based on some of my previous experience in manufacturing, including Lean Six Sigma and process improvement, logistics, safety and health, and finally, into laboratory informatics and project management. Um, my specialty here at CSOLs is strategic planning, uh, for ELN and LIMS, and most of my work is with selection and implementation projects. So, um, what about those implementation projects? I've put here this um, schematic kind of summary of the, the life cycle of a large software purchase. So, we've got our selection and purchase, implementation planning, which is what we're going to talk about today, and design and development, um, then implementation and testing, training and go live, and system care and feeding. Um, at the end of the day, we want everything to play in to uh, user adoption of our new system. That's how we get the best value for our money. Um, and as you can see, this, the implementation planning feeds into the rest of this process. So we want to do a good job with the implementation planning, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, as part of implementation planning, we want to make sure that we're on the right page um, with the rest of our group or the rest of the stakeholders. We want to understand the capabilities and our available tools. We're going to do some pre-planning, including budgeting, resources, and planning for validation. And then we want to improve our systems and prepare for the actual implementation. Um, the design and development step is the place where your LIMS or ELN vendor will come in, do some additional requirements gathering, and start um, mapping out your system, doing any kind of customization that needs to be done. So we want to be able to be in the best place to work as a team with our vendor, and that's what we're going to prepare for as part of implementation planning. So start with um, confirm requirements, priorities, and your high-level plan. So we actually want to start before the beginning of our project. Um, and what I mean by that is let's go back to where we very first started picking a vendor. Normally, when CSELS does a vendor selection, we define requirements, um, understand business objectives, understand policies and priorities, and all of that plays into selecting a vendor. It can be six, eight, sometimes 18 months between when we select that vendor and implementation actually starts for one of our clients. So if this is the case, we want to go back to the lab, go back to our stakeholders, make sure the requirements are still the same, um, check in generally with the stakeholders and end users, check in with the lab management, have priorities changed, do we have new instruments, do we have new software on the instruments, what are, are, are there any business objective changes? Are we looking to be acquired? Are we looking to acquire someone else? Do they already have a lens or an ELN? And do we have any IT policies that are different from when we first started looking at requirements? Usually that's um, a policy of doing infrastructure as a service or software as a service as the first choice. Uh, sometimes people are moving away from that and back to on-premises with their IT policies. Either way, we just need to check in, make sure we're all on the same page before we get going with our planning. So um, the steering committee is a big part of understanding how all the pieces fit together and understanding if everyone is on the same page. If you've done any kind of project management or project management training, one of the pillars of project management is management support. And lack of management support is almost always the death of a large enterprise level project, which LIMS and ELN will almost always be. So um, before you start any major planning, put in any kind of effort, you want to make sure you have your management support. And 
if possible, if you've got a policy within your company on steering committees, you should set up a, a steering committee. If you don't have a policy on steering committees, you should also set up a steering committee. And this, this committee usually consists of three or four or five people. It's usually very small, but higher level management, um, maybe an IT coordinator or director level or um, VP of IT, something of that level. They need to have knowledge of the overall company path forward. Uh, they need to have knowledge of the ongoing IT projects, but also how IT projects in general work. And they need to be the people who can make decisions. Make the decisions at the level of, hey, our project team can't figure out, can't come to consensus on this, but also higher level decisions like the sole purpose of our limbs is to improve data integrity. So they need to be able to make those decisions, sign off on them, and have the authority to push that down the chain. So once we have our steering committee, we would like to have a lab informatics roadmap. Um, sometimes we create these as part of our vendor selection engagements. Sometimes we come to a client that already has an informatics roadmap. This is, this is parallel to um, a general informatics or IT roadmap. It's gonna capture the high level plans, not only for the lab, but for other inf inf enterprise systems and how how lab informatics fit into those plans. So if you have SAP QM, for example, and you're using that to capture final result data and generate a C of A, you might want LIMS to replace that system, but you might want LIMS to work in conjunction with that system. And this is the kind of thing that's captured in a lab informatics roadmap. We're also gonna define our goals for the business and for the informatics generally and in the lab. And we wanna make sure that any enterprise plans align with the lab. If we know that we're gonna phase out SAP QM to go with the following example, then we know that the LIMS needs to fill the gap of, of building and printing those C of A's. And then we need to think about when will validation be performed? This is a, a big piece for regulated firms and regulated labs. Um, and we'll get a little bit more into the detail of validation as we go through, but we need to definitely plan for it and plan for resources and understand how that works in the scheme of the rest of our enterprise planning. So we also will define the ultimate role and the purpose of the system. Is it to improve data integrity? Is it because the client says, hey, you can't give me a C of A uh, that's generated from a single source of truth and I demand that or you're no longer gonna do my testing or we're not gonna buy your product? Is the point of this project or this system to maximize the value of the res of resources? Do we wanna improve our equipment usage? Do we wanna improve how we use our other resources, our scientists or our lab technicians? or is the sole purpose to reduce cost? Or, as in a lot of cases, as we have a dynamic regulatory environment, are we implementing a LIMS or ELN strictly for regulatory compliance? Knowing the answer to these questions, uh, and the answer should come down from the steering committee, helps us drive decisions as we go through the rest of the project. So moving on to step two, we've got our problem statement, we're looking for a solution, which in the end of the day will be an implemented LIMS or ELN. So what capabilities do we have on our team and what are our available tools? And the way we answer that question is with a gap fit analysis, which I will come back to shortly. Just wanted to talk through some of the issues that I see, some of the gaps that I see at client sites. Uh, in the terms of infrastructure, there, um, there might be some conflict again, the need for a steering committee as to do we do this on-prem, do we push this up to the cloud, do we have software as a service or infrastructure as a service. Um, either way, that's a decision that impacts the rest of our project because another thing that I see very often is there's not enough network bandwidth. If we want to add 20 users of a client server um, piece of software and we don't have the, the network infrastructure to support that, it's gonna run really slowly and 
everybody's going to be upset with a new system. If we want to do something that's wireless, say we've got iPads or scientists are carrying around laptops, but our wireless connectivity is really poor, or our wireless network is really slow, or we have gaps in our building where there's no wireless coverage, we really need to address this, this gap before we move on with the rest of our project. Another thing that we see very often is that instruments are not networked, or they're running on they're running on a machine that runs Windows 98 that no one has um, that nobody has replaced because there's this one guy in the IT department who keeps all this Windows 98 hardware to replace it when it goes bad. But if this one guy wins the lottery, a critical a mission critical instrument goes down, and we've lost all of his knowledge. So a way to solve this is to it's to standardize and harmonize, which we will also talk to. Um, talk about as we get further into the presentation, but we also need to think about risk management. Can we replace this with a new instrument? Is it irreplaceable? Is it a custom instrument? What's the risk to our bottom line if it goes down? These are the infrastructure issue of the network is one thing, but having planned or not planned or not thought through these risks is another issue that I see very often.